And now for deployment scenarios. Where would you use this? First, you can integrate NSX with any cloud management platform if you're willing to do your own integration. It has NSX API, well-defined. It's a REST API. You do your own integration. You can integrate NSX with any cloud management platform. Obviously, this is not the right answer. So VMware already has the solutions for vCloud Director, vCloud Automation Center, and then OpenStack and CloudStack. If we focus on vCloud Director first, so integration with VMware's cloud products, first, the orchestration system has to talk to vCenter, and it uses the well-known vSphere API. And then with the NSX Manager, which is really the combination of NSX API and vShield API. It communicates through REST. And then there is the vSphere API between the NSX manager and vCenter, as before. vCenter talks to individual hypervisors. NSX manager talks through controller API to the controller cluster. And the controller cluster talks to user world agents on the ESX hosts. Then you have the distributed routers, which on one hand are running routing protocols with the outside world and using control plane protocols with the controller. And you have the edge services routers, which are totally independent because they are VMs that just happen to be connected to a few internal and external segments. On the OpenStack side, what you get is plugin formerly known as Quantum plugin. Now it's called Neutron plugin. And it's included with OpenStack distribution. And what you get with that is the core Neutron functionality, so layer two segments, ports, and so on, plus layer three forwarding and security group extensions. So you can create virtual networks, you can create access control lists, you can create layer three gateways. And of course, you can manage most of the things through OpenStack, but a few things like configuring controller, adding gateway and service nodes, because they are not an OpenStack construct, you have to manage them through NSX API or user interface. Finally, how would I use it? As I mentioned it a few times, personally, I would build a new leaf and spine fabric so that I get high performance transport fabric, connect compute and storage capacity to it, and then if I use virtual appliances, and you really should use virtual appliances in this case, I would use a dedicated cluster of servers to host those virtual appliances. And then, of course, you would have a different cluster to host the management VMs. Why would I have this dedicated cluster of appliances? Well, first, if you want to, you can have this host with two interfaces or more for redundancy one going into the fabric and the other one going into the outside world. So you totally isolate the transport fabric from the outside world. And second, you will always find a security auditor that will tell you how it's totally inappropriate to run firewall on the same host as the user VMs. Then you just tell them, you know what? I'm only running firewalls on this particular host. How is that different from running contexts in a physical firewall? Please explain me the difference. And sometimes they will even give up and say, yes, you're right. When should you use NSX? If you're building a cloud, and if you believe like I do, that cloud is all about self-service, quick provisioning, and automation, then definitely consider NSX as your cloud networking solution. As you can see, you can use NSX regardless of whether you build a vSphere-based cloud infrastructure or KVM or Xen or whatever based cloud infrastructure. If you still think that more traditional approach is appropriate, and I know that some people would cloud wash that and call that cloud, but let's call that server virtualization, then if you're concerned about fast virtual networking provisioning. So if your users would like to deploy applications that have their own subnets and be totally isolated, then consider NSX. 
If you have a large data center where layer 2 domains are overstretched, consider NSX. If you are close to 4000 VLANs, NSX might be an answer. Also, if you're willing to stop buying physical appliances like firewalls and load balancers and start buying virtual ones, and I'm not saying VShield Edge, it could be anything, whatever you like. So if you're ready to replace physical appliances with virtual ones from whatever vendor, then in combination with NSX, you will get faster network provisioning. Of course, if you still have three silos that don't talk to each other, then don't try to introduce NSX because it will only lead to internal fights. And if you're a small deployment, like maybe tens of hosts and existing VLANs are good enough, fine, stay with VLANs. Just for the reference, as I said before, there are a number of virtualization webinars that you can get from me. And if you're interested in more multi-vendor picture, for example, the overlay virtual networking one covers numerous vendors. A long list of blogs and podcasts that you should follow if you're interested in these topics. I can highly recommend what Scott and Brad are writing, even though they now work for a vendor. And now it's time for all the questions that we haven't answered in the past. Would you recommend OpenStack with Neutron plugin with ESX deployment? Yeah, I think that absolutely that's one of the possibilities you'll have because with NSX for multi-hypervisor, you have, as you mentioned earlier, in one of your first few slides, that there is now the NSX V switch, which goes right into the ESXi kernel, and that works right alongside a multi-hypervisor environment, which could be powered by an OpenStack cloud. So we definitely see that as a relevant use case for NSX for multi-hypervisor. Is unified management and monitoring of overlay and underlay networks possible? Are there any tools today that provide even basic FCAPS type capability? Well, I think in terms of monitoring, I think there's a lot that you're going to see from NSX moving forward. So there's a lot of monitoring tools, for example, that VMware has, like vCenter Operations Manager. So we are pointing those tools at NSX to give you, you know, that's the nice thing about NSX with its unified API is you have centralized visibility into the state of the whole virtual network. So we'll be able to point sophisticated monitoring tools at that to give you a centralized view into what's the state of your virtual network. And if there's any problems in the physical network, we can alarm on those as well. What's the use case for NSX with VCAC? Why would you use that? for multi-hypervisor environment or for large ESX deployments? I think the answer is both, unless Scott wants to correct me, but that's the nice thing about VCAC, that you can point VCAC at a multi-hypervisor environment, and you can also point it at a vSphere-only environment. Is that right, Scott? Yeah, that's, that's right, guys. I mean, if you are looking at building your own orchestration system with uh, VCAC, uh, whether that include vSphere or other platforms, then um, that would be one area where you would want to use that for integration within the, into NSX. Now, is there a migration path between NSX for multi-hypervisors and NSX for vSphere? If I want to migrate from one environment to the other, what can I do? I think we are working on guides just for that where you know have a VM that might be connected to the V distributed switch, which is running NSX for vSphere, and then you, I'm just completely oversimplifying this, by the way, I don't mean to make it sound this easy, but you would take that VM and then you would move it over to the NSX vSwitch, which could be running on that same hypervisor, because the NSX vSwitch, remember, is that port of the OVS that runs in the ESX kernel, that could be running side by side with your V distributed switch. So in theory, you could take a VM, disconnect it from the VDS connected to the NSX vSwitch. Okay. Again, I've oversimplified that, but you can see that that's kind of how the story um, evolves. To find other virtual networking, data center, and cloud networking webinars, visit ipspace.net.